Hey, it's Johnny Jet. Welcome back to my podcast and YouTube channel. Today we have two very special guests, and I've known them for I don't know how long, at least 15 years. Um, Bob Four, Surratt, I think, right? 2004, three, I think it was. So you do the math, 17. Wow. <laughs> uh, so if you're from Chicago, you definitely know these guys, but if you're not, you, you still probably know them. But anyway, Bob Surratt and Marianne Murciano. They're married. They host a radio show together. They used to do the Travel Channel Radio, which is where I met them back in 2004 or three. And I got them on today because I said, hey, let's talk about Chicago. Let's talk about what they're doing. And um, so th these guys are hosts on the morning show on WGN Radio. Um, Marianne, what's your blog? Because you have a great food blog. I get your newsletter every week. It's, it's called SavvyPlanet.com com but put a dash between savvy and planet okay what? So savvy dash planet.com yeah and i send out recipes to our subscribers um every tuesday at 11 o'clock uh central time you'll get a new recipe something that i experimented um on with bob yes i'm the guinea pig <laughs> it, and is it free the newsletter is free right yeah it's free it's it's completely free the recipes are free uh i'm cuban so there's a little bit of a lot of garlic in my recipes. <laughs> For, fortunately, we both like garlic. There's also a lot of uh, healthy recipes. And really healthy recipes because I'm really into healthy stuff. And then I also have a store where I sell these really unbelievably popular 16-ounce bottles that people use to spray it. And, and during the whole pandemic, I, I, people were buying them like to make their own disinfectant. And it's it's been like it's 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 my business. Well, so, you know what you know what else is uh, on there right now? The the bottles that are TSA approved, shall we say? Because they're two ounce bottles. We right? just got those. Yeah. So there. So it's a set of two ounce bottles, and then you can carry your own like alcohol to spray the you know all the seat and the tray right. table, which you personally have <laughs> taught us about. The dangers of not doing that. <laughs> and is it all natural, or is it, or is it garlic, or what? what or is it your, your own whatever, secret recipe? No, it's whatever you want to make. You can oh. just put alcohol in it, or oh, make a, your own. We send out a little recipe for a disinfectant. I see. But you can you put with they're empty bottles. I gotcha. So you put whatever you want, I and then see. you just spray your seat, spray the tray table. You know, wipe it down when you're sitting in an airplane. Gotcha. Well, you know, yeah. this TSA, by the way, have, are now allowing 12 ounces of disinfectant. Uh, no. Yes, for, during the pandemic. So only only disinfectant gets to be. Well, I mean, it, it was sanitizer. It's supposed to be sanitizer. But, wow, twelve ounces. Yeah. But you still can't bring a liquid that's not a sanitizer. You know, that's a good question. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I, but I think it's just uh, I think it's just hand sanitizer. But I'll. Do OK, well, you know, I'm going to have to order 12 ounce bottles. From now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, hopefully this pandemic will be over and they will yeah. probably cut that. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, Chicago, by the way, Chicago's opening up. Um, we're going to the next phase. So that's good news for everybody. So did they announce, by the way, which day you will actually open up completely like they did for California, which is June no, 15th? They yeah. haven't. They haven't given us a date yet, but it's coming very soon. I see. I mean, every day you hear stories about how, you know, like the percentage of people that are allowed in the restaurants is now increased again. 50%. Now, now it's 50%. And, um, you know, and now that the weather's changing, my God, uh, it's, Chicago is such a fun place to be in when the weather is great. And uh, we've had a lot of good days. And do you, are the restaurants open right now or outdoor yes. dining? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Indoor we, too? Yes. Right. 50% capacity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've been eating out a lot though. There, there are so many people have, I'm just so amazed by how creative the restaurant industry has been and the way that they have put tables and chairs and heaters outside. I mean, it's really, it's amazing. You, it makes you want to support them because you want to support these people who are doing everything possible to you know, keep their business going during these tough times. Totally. I mean, so if you drive through the, you know, downtown Chicago, are a lot of businesses shut? Um, there are some, but um, as far as the bars and the restaurants, uh, they're open and uh, we still have some hotels that are closed, but most of the businesses are open now. And I mean, during the pandemic, like in the middle of it was it just like a ghost town or was it just like something yeah. out of a yeah. bomb 
Yeah, you know, it was it unbelievable. Really, it really was. Um, and during the height of it, uh, we live in the suburbs. Normally, if there's no traffic, normally 45 minutes from our place to downtown Chicago during the pandemic, it was like, you know, 18 minutes. Um, so, but the traffic's right. coming back now. Yeah. But yeah, d you, you could walk around downtown and uh, very few people were around and the poor, I mean, the businesses that really suffered and closed and some won't open are the small restaurants and coffee shops that depended on the office workers. Right. Yeah, that's really too bad. But we were recently downtown and we had a tremendous dinner right on the river and you can see people, it was a, it was a cold day and people are, it's like people are dying to be outside. It's a pent up demand. It's, the boats are yeah. back. Like the architecture tour, which is a must for anybody, that's running again. Is that's, there a certain one? Is there a certain one that you recommend? Because I heard that is the number one tour for Chicago. That is the number yeah, one is, thing. The, the best company is the oldest company, Wendella, W E N D E L L A, the Wendella Boat Company. They they're the best. But, but there's a lot there's, of them that are good. Yeah, there's another one that's really good too, which is uh, with the Architectural Foundation, right? Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. is is it's that? It's the Architecture Architecture Foundation tour, but Wendella uh, uses some of those people too. Yeah, it's it's just it it is really the nicest thing to do. Um, you know, if you're coming to Chicago, I, I, I think, I mean, I, you know, and, and also you don't even have to be cold because a lot of these boats, like you could just go inside, you know, if it's one of those cold days, but now we're getting so many nice days that, you know, you're bound to, you know, be lucky. Definitely. I, and I've never done that tour. I've, I've been on a boat through the river and it's, and I love it. Oh, you got to take it tour because the I'm architecture is so great. We love it when people come to town because we like to go because you learn something new every time. We've done it dozens of times and it never gets old. That's awesome. And, yeah. and you have done it, Johnny, you've done the... the Not the architectural. I, I've done like a private it, tour where there, it wasn't an extra tour. It was a party. On a through boat. the river. Ah. And to through the, the river and then out to the lake. Yeah, it's nice. It, it, it's beautiful. It's on a warm day, I mean... And there are so many restaurants that, I mean, for maybe for other people, it isn't a secret, but for me, it's been like a secret discovering that you go into these restaurants and then there's a whole other world in the back of the restaurant because they face the river. And it's like, it's like being in two places at once. Well, they've cleaned up and expanded the <laughs> river really walk. And there are places to eat and drink now along the banks of the Chicago River, where five, six years ago there was nothing there, and now and and they're still building more. But it's it, yeah, it's still one of the best kept secrets around here. So if you have relatives coming to visit, where would you take them? Where would you recommend people to going to eat? I mean, any you specific know, the restaurants? Best, the the best uh, company here is called Lettuce Entertain You. Lettuce like L A T T U C E. They run the best restaurants here by far, and they have all kinds of restaurants: steak, fish, uh, fancy, not so fancy, we fun, fun places. If you just go uh, to their website, I think it's l e y e dot com. Lettuce Entertain You Enterprises dot com. L e y e dot com. It's all listed there. They have places outside Chicago too, but most of them are here. And, uh, I've heard of them too. Do they the, are they the ones that do the um, like? There's a big um, what do you call it in, in one of the department stores? Where you go to different stations. Is that those guys? I can't remember what it's called. They did. They, they did, did have, have a one. place in Water Tower, uh, a food cart. Uh, it's it's not open anymore. But yeah, they did have one. They yeah, did have, like, that, the that was it. I love that place. Yeah. I love that place too. Back when there used to be crowded places. <laughs> so, so, so that, that, that was a casualty of the <laughs> pandemic? That, uh, you know, I think they were planning on uh, changing that up even before the pandemic. Okay. But they, it, it was a sort of real estate lease issue there okay. um, in, in, the, in the building where Macy's closed. And, and um, it's, a good, it's a good restaurant chain. I don't know if you've ever heard of RPM, um, RPM Italian. Um, with Bill Rancic, um, he's one of the yeah, partners, I, I and Juliana, okay. his wife. Yep. So yeah, so they're they're partners in the, th those are let us entertain you restaurants, and they have RPM, the you know the original one, then RPM C, um, uh, Italian, and then they just opened up last year or right before COVID, they opened up RPM Seafood, which unfortunately they opened it up right when you know the pandemic started. Right. But we just went last week, and oh, it is like 
you have never eaten seafood if, like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is just so yeah, creative. The dishes are so amazing. I mean, it's really yeah. RPM incredible. seafood, RPM steak, RPM Italian. They're all, all downtown. But you know what, Johnny? Um, if you you know, if you come to Chicago and spend some time here, yep. there's another whole part of Chicago that is not the super popular restaurants that are on the river um, and that are in, in the loop and in downtown Chicago. You, there are so many incredible neighborhood restaurants in these neighborhoods, these pockets of Chicago that it's really sad when tourists come in and they don't even know about that. Because they, I mean, there are, like, we we go a lot to Andersonville. Yeah, and there's a, which is a Swedish neighborhood. And there's a German it? area. And there's a Mexican area. And Italian and Chinese. Yeah, and I mean, but it's just. All those great ethnic neighborhoods. Really great, great, great food that you can't even describe. Like, I don't even remember the names of some of the restaurants that we've been going to. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are Italian because we love Italian food. So do but, I. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> How about the pizza? <laughs> Let's go to the, pizza. Oh, yeah. Well, Tell them about pizza. The, the secret to pizza here, everybody knows about the deep dish pizza and, and Lou Malnati's is famous and, and Uno's and Due's downtown. That's where it was invented. But you get in the neighborhoods. Giordano's. Giordano's, the stuffed pizza. But you get in the neighborhoods and you get this, what, what Chicagoans call uh, tavern style pizza, which is very thin, uh, a little crispy. Me too. And for, you know, just for example, on the north side of Chicago, it's a hole in the wall called Marie's pizza and liquors and you walk through the liquor store it's a liquor store <laughs> you walk through the liquor store and you get to the restaurant and the decor hasn't changed since 1958 uh, they, they they used to and have the a guy singer is the same one from 1958 <laughs> yeah. interesting entertainment magicians and, and a guy up in the windows flipping around a pizza uh, so we have a lot of places like that not to say we wouldn't like to be in a small uh, villa in italy on a side of a mountain eating we like that too <laughs> So do you like deep dish pizza? I do. I like deep dish and I like thin. I like thin. I like thin. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 grew, I grew up in Connecticut <laughs> and, uh, you know, right there in New York City. And I just. Oh, uh, so you would fold the pizza up. Definitely. Into, definitely. Yeah. Fold yeah, it up into a few pieces and then that. stuff it in Chicago your Chicago doesn't do that. <laughs> No. Nope. And if you're from outside the city, that that deep dish, I get it. It's like, what is this? It's kind of like our Italian it's beef. A pie. Nobody knows how to eat an Italian beef or what an Italian beef sandwich is except Chicagoans. But so, come here and we'll tell you how. Uh, so, Marianne, you said you're Cuban, but you grew up in Florida, correct? Yes, I grew up in Florida, but eating Cuban food like all the time. She's and a great I still, cook. She's a great and I cook. still go to Florida and I cannot get enough of I the love food. Cuban food. I you do? It. Yes. Do and you so, ever go and, to and Miami? so does my son. Really? And, okay. and my wife. They, they do you go it. to Miami yeah. ever? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I, I, bet yeah, I mean, I go all the time. I used to go every I, three weeks before the pandemic. I bet you know all about Versailles. Yes, it's in the airport. About, you don't know about the restaurant with Cuban food that we like there now. Yeah, yeah. it's called Havana Harry's. And okay. you must go. Okay, it's not fancy at all. Okay, so it's like... It is you know, just I think I might have been to there, but like an outdoor part too. Um, now they do. They with didn't like bright umbrellas and things like that. I don't think they no, did before they the didn't. pandemic. Uh, during they? the pandemic, they they no, started this was before. a few little yeah. tables. The tourists, the tourists go to Versailles for Cuban food. Mm -hmm. The locals go to Havana Harry. Well, Versailles <laughs> used to be the local place for Cuban food, and but it became this yeah. place where if there was any news, it's break, political. It's a political. around the world. Exactly. Yes. And right. especially if it was Cuba related, everybody would meet there. You would just go there and live trucks from all the TV stations <laughs> would be parked outside. And, you know, uh, they, they would do that, by the way, before Fidel Castro died. I must have covered that as a reporter a, a dozen times when there was a rumor that Fidel Castro is dead and all the live trucks would be there. All the big honchos from town would be there. Everybody would gather at Versailles as if that was like the capital or something right. and, you know, just uh, discuss what had happened. But this other place has better food. It's called Havana Harry's and it is like the food is outstanding. That place is a gold mine. I wish that we had <laughs> been able to partner up with them or something. It's a gold mine. It's, it's busy. unbelievable. Busy. Well, how about L.A.? Do you ever go to Cuban food when you come to Los Angeles? Because there is a Versailles. Yeah. There is a Versailles, but it's not related. I've eaten there. Yeah. 
You know what, Johnny, I'll tell you something. If you do like Cuban food, I'm going to tell you how you can tell if it's a great Cuban restaurant or not. Okay. Yellow order, rice? No. Order a croqueta. Croqueta. Okay. Yeah. And that's like a deep fried right. uh, thing, cylindrical <laughs> shaped thing. Yeah. And it's got ham and bechamel sauce. Yeah. It's kind of like you judge a Chinese restaurant by the egg roll. You yeah. Know? You judge. Uh, yeah. So at the Versailles in LA, we had um, croquetas okay. and, you Terrible. know, they just didn't cut it. Okay. <laughs> well, and how about New York City? There's a, like a there's like a chain of them called. Sophie's. We went to a fancy yes. one there, didn't we? Yeah. Which ones are you thinking of? The Sophie, Sophia's or Sophia's. Sophia's. I have not or been so, there. There's like seven been... of them. And, and we'd, I, my son Victor's. loves the rice and beans. So we just go right. there all the time and grab it. Isn't there one called Victor's? I, um, been, I don't think I've been to that one. And um, and that guy, that famous chef, um, his name was David Rodriguez. He began this whole um, really like a, like a Cuban food, but like gourmet Cuban food movement. And I have his cookbooks. I mean, like really delicious stuff. Okay, really, really okay. Really so here, here's the deal on the restaurants. OK, so like L.A., for example. So I like um, Arts Deli in Studio City, Cantor's. Um, the Apple Pan, these restaurants that have been around for at least 150 yeah. years. Uh, and Marianne likes the eclectic, cool, hip spots that are slightly newer. Food well, trucks <laughs> food trucks like Koji. Like yeah, there you go. Okay. I do like the food trucks in L.A. Have you eaten a, a lot yeah, there? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. yeah. They, they have be, a lot of them, and they're good. Yeah, and before the pandemic, every, um, I think it's first Friday night, in Venice Beach, they have all the um, oh. food trucks. There's like a hundred of them lined that. up. We have to do that. We're going to do that when we're there this summer. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully everything will be back to normal and um, you can do that. So, by the way, Bob, are you from Chicago? Yeah, I grew up I grew up on the north side of Chicago. been lucky enough to work in TV and radio here instead of bouncing around the country, as most people have to do. So it's been. So how did you guys meet if you're if you were a reporter in Miami? Did you move? To I was Chicago? a reporter in Miami, and then I became an anchor for a morning show in Miami, and a that's TV what show. I did—a TV show, uh, a morning show, you know, on TV. And I worked with my first Bob there, <laughs> but I came to Chicago, and I was eventually paired up with Bob, and we really, literally met on the set. Yeah, we did a oh, show like, for the for the local uh, Fox television station here, a morning show from seven to nine a.m. five days a week was called Fox Thing in the Morning for seven years. And that's how we that's how we met. And during that time, we hated each other. Um, well, maybe not hated each <laughs> other, but didn't like each other. <laughs> And then became friends, and then our friendship turned into love, and wow. then we got married, and we had a baby together. And um, Bob moved into a ready-made family because I already had two kids. Uh -huh. So now, so we raised three kids together. Amazing. Right. And it was fun. And so, how was it moving from Miami to Chicago? I mean, that had to be culture shock. <laughs> weather-wise you know you know what happens johnny i don't know I, like you've been in miami now enough to probably get this but when you live in miami and you never leave miami you really truly believe that miami is the center of the universe you really because of the way that news is covered because of the influx of people from so many places because of the huge cuban population that is it used to be, I don't know that it is so much now, but it used to be so hyper-focused on Cuba news. Everything was about that. So when I left Miami um, 28 years ago or so, something like that, and I came to Chicago, it was truly a culture shock because I realized, oh my God, like here I am working in news and there is other news. <laughs> there, is, there is news that is not you know, what happened with uh, Fidel Castro. And so it, so it was really a culture shock. And weather wise, I, I moved here in May. So the first, you know, it was already nice weather. Perfect. So my first winter here, I remember that I was driving my car because I was working at the station and winter is, you know, starts and it's dark and gray and you know, whatever, and snowing all the time. The first time that I saw that I experienced the snow, I, I thought I was like on Jupiter or something. It did <laughs> not seem like I was even anywhere. But I remember counting the days 
And it was something like 28 days. I was, I was leaving work and it was the 28th day where I had not seen the sun. And this is after being in Miami. Wow. And I was driving on Lakeshore Drive and the sun comes out and I pulled over <laughs> and I got out of the car. <laughs> and I just went like that. Yeah. <laughs> was like, I could not believe the sun was here's out. how here's how Marianne survives the winter. And since I grew up here, you know, I, I'll go out in the morning to get a newspaper or something when it's zero. I don't even have my shoes on. I'm used to this. But here's how Marianne survives. She doesn't even need a coat in Chicago I in don't. the winter because I drive her door to door uh, everywhere. Yeah. And then I'll go park the car and walk. That's the deal. That's our deal. That's why I still live here. <laughs> it's funny because my wife's from Toronto and I was like, listen, you're going to go back there. And she's like, I miss the cold. I'm like, yeah, she does. She misses it. I mean, and she misses dressing up because she can't wear her boots, yeah. right. her big coats. And, you know, you don't really get dressed up here a lot. Exactly. Especially when you're down by the beach. It's real casual. Yeah. Yes. I love that, though. Me oh. too. I mean, I'm like. <laughs> Listen, I grew up in Connecticut. I know what it's like to be in the cold. And do you miss so, the so, seasons? Do you miss do, the seasons? You know, fortunately, I get to travel a lot. So I love right. just visiting, going for a couple of days or a week max. And then I'm like, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go to the beach. And that's so what do, the, you, do you give her a little bit of that winter somewhere? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Before the pandemic, <laughs> we would go to Toronto. You know, we'd go for every Christmas. Then we go to Hawaii for New Year's. And, oh, nice! It, yeah, we have we have it pretty good, or we had it pretty good. Well, hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll go back to that. But yeah, we we usually spend um, the holidays that way, and then we go to Toronto at least four times a year. We were in Toronto okay, well, for just a little bit. We were in Montreal beautiful. a little more and loved it. Okay, so Johnny, this yeah. is my dream. This is my wish. Okay, so you're going to help us do this. Hopefully, <laughs> I want to start a tradition in our family where we spend New Year's Eve in Hawaii. How that's do we, we do? that's what we do? What where do we go? How do we do it? How do we afford well, it? Well, you know, we have kids. It's crazy you know, expensive. Adult kids. So I started doing it because a hotel company or actually I was a brand ambassador for American Express Starwood card. And so they would I actually remember this. They would actually put it in my contract. I had to go during a holiday week to one of their properties and I always choose Hawaii. But because of that, I learned that, you know what, the, the most affordable way to do Hawaii, and we started doing it after they, they stopped that brand ambassador program, use your miles and points. So I would save up all my um, Starwood points, now Marriott points, and I would just book, I would book, and you book the hotels like in February. Oh, when, you do? Yeah, you got to book them so far it's in too advance. late already? Uh, well, <laughs> now, who knows right now? I haven't looked. Yeah, cause, right. But- it's expensive. I mean, it is expensive and it's crowded, but I love it. I just, it's just such a great way to ring in the new year. Uh, yeah. Where do you go? Which, which island? Well, we always go to Oahu, but then we usually go to another island as well. So we usually go to Maui or Kauai or Lanai if we're really lucky. Uh, but because we write about it, a lot of times the um, hotels will hook us up. Yeah. And, and, and we always talk about it's full disclosure that it was sponsored, but sure. Yeah. You know, and, and, but, you have, but the only way the hotels will hook you up is if it's after the first week of New Year's because, you know, you have, they're, they're, they don't give any freebies out during that week sure. before. So, so after, so, so you pay for your New Year's Eve and all that stuff. And then you can maybe right. do like around January 5th or, or 7th. Then they'll, you know, the people yeah. start going back to the mainland mm -hmm. and then, uh, what a great, space. what a great thing. And for people who don't have those hookups, I mean, still it's what a wise thing to do is to just to use miles, to, miles and points. Yep. Miles and points. Yeah, for sure. So and, 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 you, know, and, you can and, usually find cheap tickets, by the way, I would buy my flights from Toronto and stop in LA. I try to get the longest layovers possible, which is usually like 18 hours. So we can change our clothes and and you know, oh, and, and I would good. and the flights were cheaper from Toronto than they were from LA and I would buy first class, I would oh. buy first class for like five hundred dollars wow. from okay, Toronto so to LA to Hawaii. That is unbelievable. Okay, so is that Each are way. those rates still available? I wonder. You know, I haven't looked recently, but that is one of the tricks on how to. Um, spend okay, well, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna look Chicago. into that. But but what I want to know is. Um, are you training your two beautiful little children to travel first class all the right. time? Because you know, once you go there, you can't I go know. back. I know, once you go up front, you can't go to the back. <laughs> I mean, once you go, yeah. so 
Um, my, my daughter has never been on a plane oh. and she's 21 months. Jack has been on 70. 70? <laughs> yeah. Well, before the pandemic. Before the oh pandemic. My so, so my wife and my son have not been on a plane in two years. Okay. She but, was but, pregnant with my uh, daughter. Right. And so she, they have not been on a plane. It, Okay, but back to my original question. Are you training them in first class? Are you training them and how are you going to go back? Well, you know, <laughs> we don't always fly first class. So what we normally do is I would buy the bulkhead. I, I wouldn't book right. the flight unless the bulkhead exactly. was available. Yeah, that's a per great and Because thing. I have elite status on American, I would I get the, I'd get the bulkhead free or I get the premium main right. cabin select free. And you get free check bags. Yeah. And priority, we have all the lounge access with the different credit cards. But, you know, I, honestly, I always look at what kind of plane they're flying. I, I, I try to get wide bodies. And yes, by the way, right body. now, one of the best deals in town right now is between L.A. and Miami. And, no. And, and Miami and New York on American Airlines, triple sevens, business class, lie flat seat, 17,500 miles each way. Sometimes 20,000 miles. Business class. Wow. That's great. I love that. I'm going to check that seven. out. I love that. Plane. The 777, well, especially the 777 300. Their 777 300 is the real deal. The 200 is still a good plane, but yeah. you know, I just, especially during a pandemic, you want we, the live flat yeah. seats. We were on that. We were on the, the 777, uh, the big one, the 300, did you yep. say? And well, I, well, 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 they're both, they're both about the same size. It's just the 300 is newer. Yeah, this is we perfect because we, our kids, uh, we, our family is in Miami and then our kids live in LA. So well, jump on it. And, and, and right now I've been, I've been pricing this out every day. Actually, I'm going to do it right when I get off the phone with you. I have a reminder email in my inbox um, because I'm bringing my dad out. I'm going to go surprise him next week for the first time. I haven't seen him in 350 days, 450 days. I've seen your posts. Your yeah. Facebook. So I, and I'm going to surprise him. And then I'm going to say, listen, I'm, I'm bringing you out to California so you can see your grandkids. Cause my wife oh. does not want to bring my kids on a plane yet. And um, That's I, so I have, funny. I have all the flights reserved right now. There are 20,000 each way. Um, 20,000 miles each way. Okay. Business and class, business, business yeah, class. That's, that's incredible. I'm going to look at that as soon as we get off and, and, um, but I'm you can also fly by the way, you can go LA to New York via Miami triple sevens, both way for 26,000 miles. That is just incredible. Okay. Yeah. And then the card, what's the best card for us to all have so that we can get all those benefits? Well, it, it all depends on which route you take, what you're spending like, but a lot of Chicago, the, Miami, Chicago. Credit like, card. I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I think that's what he said. But I, I think uh, oh. no, the best credit card is um, usually Chase. One of the Chase cards. I have I have Chase Sapphire Preferred. Chase I have Sapphire, a, Amex yeah. Platinum, so I can get the Centurion Lounge. I had the uh, the American Airlines City Card, so I can get into the lounge. Right. But wow. you know, I would spend two thousand dollars a year just in in credit card fees. Hmm. Yeah. But the secret to getting it. a credit card, by the way, is you have to pay it off every month in full. Otherwise, you do not get an airline rewards card or any kind of travel rewards card. Right. But if you do get one, please go to johnnyjet.com because I. Yeah, you have mentioned. links. You oh, have yeah. links on it. The, yeah. And then that, that is great. Everybody wins. I'm yeah. going to do that. Totally. So, I mean, you want a card like that where you can um, transfer it. But the Chase Sapphire doesn't transfer to American. Yeah, I have so, a chase, and I, I and I noticed that too. Yeah, we usually fly from Chicago on American. It works out. We just, yeah, well, American because we're going to LA fun. because we're going to LA or Miami. So and the other oh. secret, by the way, um, for cheap flights to Miami and to get upgraded is to fly when the business travelers are not, because mm -hmm. you can't compete. Even someone like me who flies a hundred thousand miles a year on American, I would not be able to get upgraded on a Miami, LA flight or a New York, LA flight unless I flew on a Saturday night. Oh, is Saturday that, night. Or I thought, Saturday early morning because the business travelers, you know, they, they don't pay for their tickets and, they, and there's no way they're going to be flying on a Saturday because they want to be home. They're usually flying. I wonder, we just, got, we, we just got great deals to Miami on Saturdays. Well, from Saturday to Saturday. The business travel's way down, isn't it? Totally. I mean, business travel is crushed, is getting crushed right now. Yeah. But they, they expect it to come back in September. Hmm. And the reason why American, by the way, is flying all these big triple sevens between uh, Miami and LA and New York because uh, the business travels down and international travels down, so they're they're right. um, it's really they're using their planes. They they need to use 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 them. Yeah, wow. 
so many great tips. I mean, I, I like I was saying to you, you know, right before we started this, you know, th this uh, podcast, I was saying to you that I love like your yours is one of the few blogs where when I see it coming in, I actually open it well, and I read the articles. Well, so. thank you. It's, a, it's interesting. You always have great stories. I, it. I say this whenever we have Johnny on the radio, by the way, WGNRadio.com if you want to listen anywhere in the morning. Uh, I, I've been on every internet site. In my spare time, I serve yes. every site on the internet and by far the best travel site, the most comprehensive johnnyjet.com well, thank you so what time by the way can people listen to you live uh, oh uh, five until 9 a.m central time man you you had to get up at five you so you what time do you get up four he gets up at 3 30 wow yeah that hurts he's going to bed in as soon as we hang up <laughs> I, well that's what i should do it's six o'clock there i never do yeah i just take a nap during the so marion are you on the show I'm on the show on Fridays. Just Fridays, okay. Fridays, I'm on the show. Um, yeah, this time around. I mean, normally, Same time? A, um, I, I I try to go on as late as possible <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to have to wake up so early. Right. And then, um, and because I have the Savvy Planet um, website and I, I offer tips, Savvy Tips, and that's what we talk about. We talk about all the Savvy Tips that we and, have. And what's your Instagram? Um, savvy dot planet and my most famous instagram is oh, havana girl oh, h-a-v-a-n-a that's, right. that's what i follow for sure g-i-r-l yeah havana and bob girl. and bob i see that you're getting active on twitter lately i don't think you, I don't think you were <laughs> oh, before yeah. i'm at yeah at bob surat uh s-i-r-o-t-t -T. yes I, I i fool around with facebook not so much instagram but yeah i tend to uh look at twitter a lot and i've been i've been tweeting a little bit lately and uh and and three or four times in a, a week we do uh we have a, a facebook page it's called surat and Murciano. not so easy to remember but um there we go live we do facebook live maybe two three or four times a week depending on what our schedule usually are. after dinner after yeah. dinner and then we have the we have these people like johnny you would love this they are from all over we have all over the world all over the world like we have regulars from australia we have a guy from Scotland. Wow. We have uh, people in Hawaii. We have people in Puerto Rico. We have people in Spain. We um, Italy, Germany, Italy. Italy. I mean, it is unbelievable how these people find us. But they how have did they? found us. How did they find you? We have did no you? idea. Okay. Some of the, you know, a lot of the U.S. Like there's uh, somebody in Arkansas who pops up occasionally, a transplanted Chicagoan. Yeah, but how the people in, and then we know a Chicagoan in Mexico who's on there. But the, but as far as Australia and Italy and how they found us, we I have don't, no I don't idea. Know. Interesting. Yeah, the, the mysteries country, of the internet. You gotta love the internet for the, that reason. <laughs> I mean, there's some yeah. there are some really good things yeah, about the internet. Sure. So last thing about Chicago, and then I'll let you guys go and Bob go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Chicago's. You're just a lot in the news about, you know, gun violence. So are you scared walking down the streets of Chicago? No, never. And you know what? It does get kind of blown out of proportion. Really, there is most of the crime here. And I, I, I guess this is pretty much the same and similar in other cities. Uh, most of the crime is concentrated in a very small area of, of town here. And I mean, that's where they have huge problems. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's there, we have there's too many guns uh, around, Definitely. and there are problems everywhere. But what you're hearing about on the news almost always ninety south side, right? It's the south side. It's, yeah, like one, on it's the, a one area of the south. It south is, side. but I mean, but during there, I mean, you know, let's not forget how crazy things were during, you know, like the Black Lives Matter, you know, movement that was going on all over the country. Um, during that time, there was you know, it was scary to be downtown. Yeah, we had a People couple of we had did couple, not go downtown. There were a couple I mean, of there were a couple of nights uh, that where it, you know even Michigan Avenue got hit and some right. of the downtown areas. I mean, got same hit, thing with LA. I mean, right. LA, everywhere, yes. New York City. Yes. I mean, every yeah. big city. Right, but, but it, I mean, but that's not a normal thing. But no. people did get scared about going downtown, and we felt super lucky that we lived in the suburbs and there was none of that here. And then Bob would go downtown to work, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like, um, I mean, you know, it was very well patrolled and stuff, but it was during that time when everybody else was suffering from that too. So it was kind of scary. So mm -hmm. most of the tourist areas, you did not have to worry about any kind of. Correct. Right. 
Gotcha. Yes, for yeah. sure. And, and now that things have calmed down again, that is uh, absolutely true. Okay, good. Well, listen, I appreciate you guys taking the time and uh, follow these guys, subscribe to this oh, channel. And uh, um, Yeah, you. it's so fun talking to you, Johnny. We always love it. Well, I yes, love it. We so do. Thank, and thank we you love, for all uh, the support. Love you having you on WGN Radio, and we'll talk again there. And uh, hopefully, you'll invite us back to the podcast. Yeah. Anytime. All right. And we, and we love Natalie and your beautiful children. <laughs> well, thank you. You're too <laughs> kind. Take care. Happy right, travels. Bye. <laughs>